Hello, Afton. I'm going to screw with the camera here. I kicked it a couple times. All right. Uh, hello, Afton. How is everybody doing today? Uh, I had some computer issues. Wasn't able to record this yesterday. So uh, let's go ahead and let's record it. Let's take care of this right now. So um, in doing all this exponential stuff, I think it's important. Sometimes we, again, we lose sight of what we're ultimately trying to accomplish uh, and what the purpose is of a lot of this stuff are. So I wanted to go ahead and start today, just kind of talk about some things. So we're gonna go ahead and look at a problem. So a person invests $5,000, they get a 10% annual return on their investment. How much money will they have in 10 years? So if you wanna go ahead and try this problem real quick on your own and then come back and we'll talk about it, you'll probably be wrong. But like I said, go and hit that pause button, try this, go for it. All right, so now let's go ahead and let's see if you're right or wrong. If you said they'd have $10,000, you are incorrect, okay? I know it's very easy to think that. Like, oh, well, I mean, 10% of 5,500, they're getting 500 for 10 years, that's another 5,000, so of course. Well, that's the problem though, is that we're looking at a 10% annual return, okay? It's not a 10% return like, for like from their initial investment, it's an annual return. So what that means, we have to look at this year by year. We have to break this down and say, okay, well, at year zero, the beginning, that's just what we call it, we have $5,000. So we need to figure out 10% of that, 0 0.10, which we could just have 0 0.1. So we end up with $500. But now we need to add that 5,000 back in. And we end up with 5,500. That's how much they'll have at the end of year one. And everyone goes, yeah, that's what I was doing too, Mr. Pete. No, because now we have to do that same thing again. We have to reevaluate this every year. I'm not pulling that $500 out. That's still invested. I'm going to be making money off that. So now I have to figure out 10% of that amount. And that's going to be $550. This year, I'm going to make an extra $50. So now add that back to what we started with here, that $5,500. Put plus signs on there. So now at the end of year two, we have $6,050. That's our year two amount. And then we would need to keep going. I'm not going to do this the whole time here, um, but we would just need to keep going on all that. And so we would have, in that year two amount, we would take that 6,050, go ahead and multiply that by that 0 0.01, 0 0.10, sorry, 0 0.01 is 1%. Um, so we'll end up with $605. That's what we end up making after that, but again, add it back to the original. Um, and we'll end up with $6,655. And now we would need to keep going with that. So that's year three. We would need to keep going and keep going and keep going each year. Now, rather than doing this seven more times, let's see if we can kind of summarize some of these things. If we can go ahead and kind of pare this idea down so that way, one, maybe we're not, I was like, having to just keep multiplying and adding, multiplying and adding, multiplying and adding, because that's getting kind of a pain in the butt. So let's look at this. So this 500 right here represents 10% of what we started with. Well, this 5,000 represents 100% of what we started with. So that means that this amount is actually 110% compared to our starting amount. So that means that again, this right here is 110% of, again, where we started with. So we can take that idea and to figure out the next year, rather than separating this as a multiplication and addition problem, we could go ahead and simply multiply by that 110% and multiply by 1.01. 1 
So if we do that, I need my calculator. I don't have my, I mean, I can guess what that is, but I'd rather be accurate. We can see my big uh, fancy calculator here. You you don't need a big fancy calculator to do this math. You just need literally any calculator to do that math. But I can go ahead and 6655 times 1.1. We end up with, uh, my calculator will like to do fractions. Uh, we end up with, for this next amount here, 7000 uh, $7,320.50. I added the extra zero. So that's what we have at the end of year four. So now, cool, we've at least cut our workload in half by recognizing I can just use 110%. Now, if you would have done the same thing, okay, and again, you can go back, we've already done the math here. If you take 5,000 times 1.1, or 1.10, you're gonna end up with 5,050. If you take 5,000, or five, sorry, 5,500. If you take 5,500, you multiply that by 1.1, you're gonna end up with this 6,050. So you can go back and double check that this is really what's happening. And this is a nice, easy way to, to pare this down, to simplify this idea is just recognizing, I'm gonna look at the total percentage of what I end up with. I'm gaining 10%, but I'm always keeping that 100%. So ultimately I just have 110%. Now, rather than doing all this, Let's go ahead and let's bring this in because now you're probably going like, okay, Mr. Keith, what, you said exponential applications. How is this an exponential application? Well, what we can do is we can say, okay, well, we started with that 5,000. Okay, we're starting with 5,000. But then we're going to multiply that by 1.1. And then I'm going to multiply that times 1.1. And then I'm going to multiply that number times 1.1, and I'm gonna keep multiplying by this 1.1. Specifically, how many times am I gonna be multiplying by that 1.1? Well, it's 10 years, so I'm gonna do that 10 times. So if I'm multiplying by the same number, if I'm multiplying by the same number 10 times, how can I just show that I'm multiplying by that same number 10 times? Oh wait! We can use an exponent. And I can simply say 5,000 times 1.1 to the 10th power. So now, all this that I was doing, and I didn't even do it half of the amount of times we need to do it, all this that I was doing can be summarized in just this little expression. So now I can figure out exactly how much money I will have in this right here. And this is how, whenever you hear about forecasting and things like that, they figure out the trends and they say, okay, we can expect this, this is an this is an average annual return here, and da, 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 and then you can project like, okay, so in 20 years, this is how much money you should have. This is what they're doing. They're using these fairly simple um, formulas to figure this out. Uh, my calculator, I have to tell it to approximate. now. Uh, when we, so when we type it into our calculator, we'll end up with $12,968.71. That's how much money we will have after 10 years. That's an extra $3,000. That's a pretty good chunk of change. So that's what you need to recognize is that, again, just, just saying, hey, I'm gaining 500. Well, you're missing out on a lot of money because if you leave that money in there, your, your money's making money for you and you can keep going. Now, I mean, in the grand scheme of thing, things is, uh, I mean, is, is almost $3,000. Is that horribly, horribly significant? Meh, it's okay. But what if instead of 5,000, I invested 5 million? So what that means now is that decimal place just moves over three spots. So now we're not talking about we're not talking about three thousand. We're talking about an extra three billion. That is pretty significant. So that's just the big thing I want you guys to talk about is that yeah we usually stick in the thousands, but a lot of times when we're talking about these these exponential growths and investments and things like that. A lot of times those numbers are dealt with in the millions. 
So just change the word thousand to millions. And then all of a sudden you go, whoa, that's a lot of money. So now, like I said, I already, I already didn't say. Right now, I want you guys to understand these applications. Okay, that's the big thing. I want you guys to really just have a good understanding of how we can use this exponential stuff and why being able to solve these things is important and everything else. Because if we can understand that idea, if we can understand why uh, we want to be able to solve an equation, because ultimately I want to be able to figure out that time. We should get to a problem like that before the end of the day. Uh, I want you guys to, to see, hey, wow, this is kind of important for me to understand. Hey, if I know I need to have this amount of money in the end, I was like, then the flip of that is I should say, okay, well, how many years until I can retire and things like that. And that's, that's again, what we're trying to figure out here is that's where we're trying to set this up. If we can understand how to set it up then we can turn around and we can understand how to start predicting things in the future. And again, that's what financial forecasting is. Um, I'm not an expert in it. I just pretend. So, with this, I'm not going to overly bog. I'm not going to overly bog you guys down with this because we are going to do a lot with this second semester. Right now, I want you to just kind of kind of get your feet wet, just kind of get a base level understanding so you know what's happening here. So that way, next semester we can just jump right in uh, to the bigger grandiose problems. So, with that in mind, you do not have homework tonight. Stop. It doesn't mean leave yet. Again, I want you guys to be prepared. I want you to understand ultimately when you're solving these equations, what is the reason for solving those equations? What is the, the main outcome that we're trying to get to? Well, we're trying to get to a point where, I mean, if I throw some bigger numbers at you, it's not difficult. It's just different. All right. So your great, 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 great uncle uh, left you $50 400 years ago. It sat in a savings account with a 2% annual return. Pfft, weak sauce, 2% annual return. How much is it worth today? There should be a T there. <laughs> uh, worth today, now. All right, so, um, Let's start with that. So we know what we're starting with here. We know that we're going to have $50, okay? So we can go ahead and we can write that down as $50. Now let's think about it. So if I'm gaining 2%, then that means each year I'm going to have 102% money, okay? So whether this is $50 or $5,000, it doesn't matter. I'm just starting with 2% money, or, or I'm sorry, 102% of whatever. So again, I know that each year I'm going to be multiplying by that 1.02. That's how we write 102%. And now how many times would I need to multiply that? Well, he left in the account 400 years ago for me. I was like, so since he left in the account 400 years ago for me, I now know that I'm going to have an exponent of 400. But it was just 2%, right? I mean, just just 2%. That, that's, that's, that's a pittance. That's nothing. Let's go ahead. Yeah, I got the calculator here. We'll do the math. Whatever. All right. $50, uh, parenthesis, 1.02, nothing, uh, to the second power, oh, not to the second power, sorry. Why did I put second power? I don't know to the 400th power, um, okay. Huh, uh, I haven't gotten that before. Clear, 50 times 1.02 to the 400th power. My calculator has decided it can't do that. That's weird. I'm going to try this one more time here. Uh, 
Okay, this is a this is a problem I've never had before. Usually, it will at least oh, it put, put it it was on float. Okay, that's why. I don't. Um, give me two seconds here. I apologize. Um, no, that won't be the issue. Um, yeah. All right, that's a really 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 big number. Um, there we go. I don't know what happened here. Um, no, that doesn't seem right either. Okay. Um, so that $50 turns into uh, one hundred thirty-seven thousand seven hundred thirty-three dollars and twenty-two cents. I don't know about you, but that's a pretty great uncle. All right, sorry about that. That joke would have had more impact if I wouldn't have had to have you know stopped for a minute and said like, "Hey, what's up with my calculator?" Anyway, so let's talk about this. First off, uh, this problem is slight nonsense. For a couple of reasons. One, how would your great, 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 great uncle know about you? It's the first problem. Uh, second problem, it was 400 years ago. You know what didn't exist 400 years ago? The dollar. The country is only, you know, about 250 years old. So dollar wasn't a thing. Uh, but I do this, I do this to make a point. I do this to make a point here. $50 turned into, I mean, over $100,000. Exponential growth is a very powerful thing given enough time. Okay, even though we start with a very small number there, this still turned in to be quite a big thing. Okay, we saw in that last problem that in 10 years, we had, I was like, we more than doubled our money. I was like, wait a few more years and you triple it. I mean, it's a pretty big thing. So that's what I want you guys to understand in all this is that this exponential growth is a very powerful thing. It is a very important thing. And to that effect, all right, and I, I debated, I debated on if I want to do this next problem because it might be a little close to home right now with what's going on, but this is um, a pretty important thing. So uh, a viron duplicates every minute. I had to look up that word. I've been saying the word virus cell, even though I know viruses don't have cells. Um, that's basically like one one virus strand, a viron. Uh, a viron duplicates every minute. If a person contracts four virons, so four of, of the little individual virus things, uh, how many will that person have in an hour? So get it, understand. So let's talk about this here. So now we might, we, we might just want to think about this. Okay, so think about this. All right, duplicates every minute. So if they start with four, how many will they have the next time? Well, if it's duplicating, they have eight. And then if it duplicates, they'd have 16. And then if it duplicates again, they'd have 32. Okay, well, again, I'm not doing this a bunch of times, but let's think about this. So if I'm starting with four, what would I multiply by to go from here to here? Well, that'd be times two. And to go from here to here, well, that would be times two. And from here to here, oh, that would be times two. So we just keep multiplying by two. So that's the number that we need to raise to a power. How many times will we need to multiply by that two? Well, if it's in an hour, it duplicates every minute. How many minutes are in an hour? Well, that would be 60. All right, so starting with four, um, starting with four here. So again, got my calculator. Four and then uh, times two to the 60th power. <laughs> thought I might beat the bell. I really thought I might. Uh, it's, not, it's not too big, guys. It's not too big, guys. If you try to do this on your calculator, uh, it might be too big for your calculator. Uh, but we end up with... Four six one one six eight six zero one eight four two seven three eight seven nine zero four. Let me throw some commas on here. Comma, 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 comma. Million, billion, trillion, quadrillion. It's just four pentillion virons. I mean, pff, okay. Whatever. 
This is why you wear a mask. Now, a few things to point out. Virons do not duplicate that quickly, okay? Two, your body has an immune system. Hopefully, if you only contract four virons, your immune system will take them out before they can start reproducing. So that's the first thing I would do. However, uh, I would say typically virons duplicate every, um, every eight to 12 minutes. I mean, that's, that's how often your cells reproduce every eight to 12 minutes. So, I mean, but realize that, I mean, it gets pretty big pretty quickly. Okay. This is why it's important to stay healthy. This is why it's important to, to eat right and exercise because that way that helps your immune system be effective and your immune system can fight off any type of virus that you can track. So again, that's, that's the idea here. Okay. Now, like I said, I debated because again, I apologize. This is too close to home for you, but I do want you to understand like, again, while this part is unlikely, this part of like it, it duplicating every minute, that's the unlikely part. Um, the rest of this, if your, if your immune system isn't strong enough to fight things away is, is pretty significant. Okay. So this is not a completely unrealistic, unrealistic number. Now, when we talk about the number of cells in your body and stuff like that, I mean, you trillions and, and again, a lot, a lot of, a lot of cells in your body. So like, you can't count the number of, I mean, your, the number of cells is probably easily, you know, um, 10,000 times bigger than this. So with that in mind, actually that's a great question. I'll have to, I'll, I'll do a, you, you can do a Google search. I'll do a Google search later on how many cells are back in our body. But this can happen very quickly. That's why, again, stay healthy, wear your mask. That's why at the end of all these videos, I say stay, stay, uh, stay safe out there. Because I understand the math. I understand how bad things can get really quickly. So that was, that was all I got. So again, ultimately what we're going to be getting to at the end is like, at, like next semester and all that, we're going to go back and we're going to start talking about like finding, hey, how long until this happens and things like that. Right now, I just wanted us to get, again, our feet wet. We'll have some formulas and all that. Uh, but on that, that's all I got. So on that note, I will bid you adieu. Until next time, and we can see Stay safe out there, Afton.